This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. She's a 65-year-old lady who has this long-standing hypermature morgagnian cataract and let's uh, go through some of the strategies on dealing with such a case. So as we all know as soon as we puncture the capsule there is going to be aggressive fluid and getting a rexus itself is a challenge especially because of the poor visualization. The next challenge would be to deal with the nucleus. The nucleus because it's free floating dividing it and phacoing it would be a challenge. Using the appropriate method to do so is going to be helpful. Plan would be like you know first puncture irrigate out all the liquefied cortex so that we can see well then get a rexus right. In this case I'm going to use the horizontal chop technique to divide the nucleus. So let's begin. The side ports are constructed, the anti-capsule is stained with the help of a trepan blue under the air bubble. Dispersive OVD is used to coat the endothelium and also to pressurize the anterior chamber. 2.8 mm posterior limbal incision is created. Time to perform the rexis. As soon as I puncture the anti-capsule, as expected we have the liquefied cortex which is just rushing out. So gentle irrigation ensures that the liquefied cortex is irrigated out and now we can have a good visualization of the anticapsule and the tearing edge. The chamber is refilled with OVD and with the help of the forceps the capsule is gently grasped and I begin to tear. The point which I am looking for as I am trying to do the rexus is uh, look at the health of the zonules. Now if the capsule is tearing very easily without much of a resistance or any evidence of wrinkling at the edge of the tearing margin that suggests that the zonules are reasonably healthy. So in this eye it looks like the zonules are reasonably healthy that's a good sign. The rexus is done now is the time to manage the nucleus. So the most difficult aspect of uh, surgery in a morgagnian cataract is the management of the free floating nucleus. Because we don't have an underlying uh, epinuclear cushion, the lens would be wobbly and it's difficult for us to stabilize it and then do a chop. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate the horizontal chop technique. Uh, I'm going to use a blunt chopper to achieve that. So before that, I would just like to create a small central trench and these are the sculpt settings which I'm using. The idea of creating this small central pit is to ensure that the phaco tip can be buried much more deeper into the substance of the nucleus. This ensures a better hold. A better hold ensures a good crack when we do the chopping. So that's the idea of creating this small pit. Once it is done, settings are changed. I'm going to use a higher vacuum setting and using a burst longitudinal energy, the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. Now watch the position of the horizontal chopper. It's a blunt chopper. It's placed exactly opposite the tip. Let me pause the video for a moment here. The physical forces are at its peak when the chopper is directly opposite to the phaco tip rather than being off axis. If the chopper is placed slightly off axis, apart from losing out the benefit of uh, the maximum physical force which can be achieved, we also induce certain torque which again results in tilting of the nucleus and we may not end up having a good crack. So that's the reason why positioning the chopper exactly opposite to the phaco tip is critical. So once I positioned it, the maneuvers are very simple. Only my left hand with the chopper is moving towards my phaco tip and as it nears it, I can really see the crack happening there and gentle lateral separation maneuvers ensure that the crack is going through and through. Even if it doesn't go through and through, no need to panic, just re-engage and do the lateral separation maneuvers. The key in this case is we need to do it in a very slow and controlled manner. There's no need to hurry. So once we have a stable chamber, and a good hold, it's actually pretty easy to do the horizontal chopping. The same maneuvers of horizontal chopping that is first gripping the nucleus and then positioning the chopper exactly opposite to the tip and then moving towards it. And we have a very effortless way of cracking the nucleus. I feel the horizontal chopping is the best way to deal in these morgagnian cataracts. Only thing is if the nucleus is very dense like few of them would be, they will be just like some hard rocks, small tiny rocks. Those are really going to test the skill levels of the surgeon. 
The nucleus is now subsequently divided into smaller fragments. Once it is done, time to emulsify each of them. Again, the emulsification process has to be in a very controlled manner. There's no hurry. Just eat one piece at a time. The amount of turbulence can be controlled by using judicious energy, which is controlled by the foot pedal. And the FACO energy is always set at linear so that we can control the amount of energy which we are delivering at the tip. Slowly but steadily, each of the fragments is emulsified. The last few fragments of uh, nucleus are to be emulsified. Slowly but surely, it is done. Time to deal with the cortex, but there's hardly any. A little bit of an irrigation, then filling the chamber with OVD. Time to put in the lens. The planned intraocular lens is gently negotiated into the capsule bag. OVD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out. The side ports are hydrated. That's it, the case is done. So a few key things to learn from this uh, case. Horizontal chopping is one of the best modalities to when dealing with a hard morgagnian cataract. For achieving a good horizontal chop in these free-floating nucleus, so a few things are important. Number one, good grip. To achieve a good grip, I prefer to create a small central pit so that the phaco tip can go in and hold at the, the central and the most belly part of the nucleus. The second important aspect would be to position your chopper. It is just hooking the entire nucleus exactly opposite to the tip. This ensures that there is very minimal torque and we can divide the nucleus using very little physical force. It cracks quite effortlessly. And the third point obviously would be to emulsify these fragments in a controlled manner. Although there is no epinuclear cushion, the PC is directly exposed to the phaco tip. If your chamber is stable enough and you are at the right plane, you don't have to worry about anything. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.